Emily Young has no fingers on her left hand. It's a condition called symbrachydactyly. Some of the boys make a mickey out of me. What do they say? They say Emily's got a little hand and all that stuff. At just seven years old, Emily hopes the teasing will soon stop. She's just made a very adult decision. They go into um, put needles in. They're going to cut my bones. And they're going to get a bone from my foot to put in there. And they're going to have needles in them. My mum and dad's got to twist them out round every day. Are you scared? Um, a little bit. Today, Emily is going to Great Ormond Street, London's leading children's hospital. She faces painful surgery, and the weeks ahead will be hard. But at the end, if all goes well, she'll have what she wants more than anything else, long fingers. How do you feel, Emmy? Do you feel nervous? So do I, girl. Come here, madam. <laughs> I'm feeling sick. I feel... I'm very nervous, just totally mixed emotions, wondering whether we're doing right or whether we're doing wrong, but also pleased for her, because there is now finally somebody out there that is willing and happy to help her. Symbrachydactyly is a congenital anomaly seen in one in 20,000 live births. Until now, nothing could be done for these children but a technique used to lengthen limbs is being cleverly adapted to this condition to offer new hope for little ones like Emily. I hope it will improve her quality of life. Things that we can do with our hands that we take for granted, Emily needs a hand with. Perhaps she can do it for herself now. That's all. No, it isn't. It is. Come on, Paul, to the train. As brave as she is, she's still just a child, and last-minute nerves set in. Boy, girls! Many children with some brachydactyly have no finger bones to work with. Emily, though, is more fortunate. She has stubs. The old way of lengthening bones is called distraction. The surgeon divides an existing bone in two and allows new bone to grow between the parts. But that is very slow, at best a centimeter a month. This new technique is three times as fast. Hand surgeon Paul Smith specializes in this procedure. First, he inserts pins into the small bones. You can feel it on the other side as it comes through the bone. Um, you know, you're trying to go from one bone to the next bone to the next bone so that you actually get a rigid frame. Um, that can, it's just fiddly. It's not difficult, it's just fiddly. Once the pins are in place, the bone is divided in two and pulled apart using a device called an external fixator. When the gap is three centimeters wide, he will graft in a bone from her foot. So now we're all set up, really. Um, the distractors are in place, the bones have been divided, and all we have to do is wait for a few days, let the hand settle down, and then start to turn these so that you get a, a millimetre, about a millimetre, a half millimetre a day. While Emily's new fingers won't have joints or fingernails, she will be able to pick things up. It certainly does contribute to function because you, I mean, these children usually have pretty good uh, movement at the MP joints, these, the big knuckles. And um, if you give them decent length fingers, then they're able to grasp uh, objects that they couldn't grasp, you know, before. Thank you. Open your eyes. Open your eyes, sweetheart. You've done really well. Well done, girl. Hey. The operation over, now the hard part begins, both for mother and daughter. When Emily goes home from hospital, Stephanie will have to find the courage to turn the bolts that will gradually stretch her daughter's fingers, knowing it will cause Emily pain. Hi. 
To give her moral support, Emily has a surprise visitor. 12-year-old Lauren Jones was one of the first children to have her fingers lengthened and now shows off her new hand. Do you want to see how it turns out, yeah? Yeah, go on. We're all looking forward to this. <laughs> oh, look, Em. Pull your sleeve back up. Isn't that better? I hope you... you please pleased with it. Lauren has become a mentor for younger children like Emily. I was really depressed. I was... I was like, why... why is it me? Why... what have I done wrong? I don't think anyone deserves um, short fingers because it's really... it's really hard. It makes me more confident, definitely more confident. And I'm not shy to speak anymore. I used to be like, sitting in the corner, just sitting there and just, just looking at people. You just think, oh my God. <laughs> and it's, it has changed me a lot. You can clean it, dress it, and then it's finished. Clinical Whereas nurse Rachel Hall shares the children's it, ups and downs. And it, Before Emily can go home, she and her mother must learn how to clean the pin sights and turn the screws on the lengthening device. Emma, Emily's going to go through um, highs and lows. I'm sure there's going to be days when perhaps the pin sights get, are a bit sore. And I think for her, really, from my point of view and from her parents' point of view, is, is to com keep reminding her that at the end of the day she is going to have longer fingers. If you look in the gap, you'll watch it move. Okay. Can you see it moving? Really? Was that uncomfortable? A little bit. Was it? Was it? Did it feel the same as when we clean it? It did. It did hurt. In the weeks that follow, Emily's fingers have been lengthened by three centimeters. Bone from her foot has been grafted in. This is the moment Emily has been waiting for. Because these finger, these ones now are nearly at that level, aren't they? Of all the other fingers. Are you happy? I feel much more better. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. It is fantastic. And it am. It's marvellous. It's much more longer. Um... You happy?